Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah for those of you that haven't practiced with me to date and I will be guiding you through practice here today. Um, so today's class is called Connect and Stabilize. Um, so we're going to be working with some props, um, essentially mainly a block, um, two blocks, one block. If you don't have any blocks, um, get creative. You can use a Tupperware box or a big thick book. Um, even a rolled up towel. It's just more to find a connection between the thighs when we're in things like um, chair pose, for example, just to kind of bring in some activation um, and a little bit of stability into our postures through activation. <laughs> um, so yes, that's what we're going to be exploring today. Um, this is your practice, so as per usual, feel free to go at your own pace. Um, feel free to take um, any breaks when it's calling to you, if you require a child's pose at any point or you'd like to sit over the hills um, or if there's a movement that's not calling to you, feel free to park it. This is your practice, your exploration um, and your version of this class that I will be guiding you through today. So when you are ready, we're going to start on our backs to begin with. So come all the way down to the mat, having your blocks just at the top of your, or your props at the top of your mat, just to either side. And then once you've found your way all the way down to the mat, come to bend the knees and plant the feet down onto the, onto the mat. And then bring them very close together so the knees are touching, maybe the ankles are touching. And then start to take the knees out towards the side so that the knees are coming down towards the, the, the earth. As you do so, slide the bases of the feet to touch one another. Come in to find Supta Bhadakonasana, reclined butterfly. Now you can always use the blocks if you want to. Prop up the knees here. I'm going to be here for a few moments to start our practice today. So once you've found your Supta Bhadakonasana, come to maybe close down the eyes or take a soft gaze. The hands can rest on the body, maybe they're away from the body. And start to become conscious of the breath. Start to tune into where the breath might be within the body. Making an observation, but not attaching any judgment here. Just simply observing where the breath might be within the body. That might be for you in the abdomen, maybe the chest, maybe the rise and fall of the shoulders, or maybe it's through feeling the air as it passes through the nostrils in and out. And simply staying here with this observation. Focusing your attention on the centre of where your breath is. If the mind starts to wander, you know that it's perfectly natural, just simply guide it back to the focus of the breath where it is within the body. And then next, consciously become aware of the breath, the rhythm of the breath. Specifically, observing the inhale and exhale. Maybe that the inhale or the exhale is longer or shorter than one another. Maybe you take a pause between each breath or maybe there is no pause. Once again, just merely observing your quality of breath here, there is no judgment attached to this. Just noticing the breath. We're not trying to change anything here. We are just simply becoming conscious of the breath within the body. And then slowly start to let go of that consciousness of the breath. 
Take a nice big inhale through the nose if it's there for you. And then a big sigh out through the mouth. If that felt good, maybe take two more rounds in your own time. Inhaling through the nose or through the mouth if it's not there for you through the nose. A big sigh out of the mouth. One more round. Inhaling, filling up the lungs. Nice big exhale, letting it all go. And if you have any props underneath your knees, just come to remove them, allowing the knees to fall down towards the ground, allowing gravity to do its thing here. Slowly start to open up the eyes if you've closed down the eyes. And then start to bring some awareness to the feet, to the soles of the feet, to the big toes as they touch, to the heels as they touch. Allowing the pose to be passive here. And then on your next breath, come to really push the feet together, bring in some activeness to this posture here. You might start to feel the outsides of the thighs turn on, maybe the glutes turn on, and then come to soften. Allow the pose to become passive again. I'm going to take that a couple more times, really pushing into the feet, finding that sense of engagement as the feet squeeze into one another, legs that start to turn on, and then come to soften. And take that one more time in your own time. Coming to bring the feet to really squeeze to one another as if you're pushing, put, resisting each other, resisting the basis of the feet. And then come to soften. And then just take a round of breath here. And then on your next breath, bring the hands beside the body if they're not already. Palms are facing down. Start to bring some awareness into the tailbone. Start to gently just tuck the tailbone under and just notice what that might do within the hip flexors here. If that feels okay for you, maybe you start to push into the feet one more time, finding that sense of activation, and then come to lift the hips off of the mat ever so slightly. It might just be a millimeter, it might be a centimeter, it might be an inch, just lifting the legs, the, the hips ever so slightly to hover and then come to place them back down again. Allow the legs to soften. I'm going to take that one more time, pushing into the feet. Maybe you don't find that tuck of the tailbone this time, maybe you explore the tailbone untucked, come to lift the hips. Allow them to hover for a moment, pushing into the hands to help assist. Gaze up towards the ceiling. On your next breath, come to lower. Allow the legs to soften. And then just notice what there is to notice here. How are the hip flexors feeling? How is the low back feeling? Is it feeling good? Is it feeling more open? Is it not? And once again, not attaching any judgment here. Just coming to observe how the body might be feeling. And then bringing the hands to the outside of the thighs, gently help to assist, guide the knees into one another, planting the feet on towards the mat. Slowly bring one knee in towards the chest, followed shortly after by the other knee in towards the chest. Bring either the hands to the front of the shins or the knees, or maybe you wrap the forearms or arms around the front of the shins. Give yourself a little squeeze here. Bringing the knees towards the chest. Maybe you're taking some rocks side to side. And then gently taking, interlacing the hands and bringing them around the front of the right knee. Come to extend the left leg long. Take the right arm out towards the side, maybe even, maybe in a T like, or a cactus. And then gently guide that right knee across the left side of the body, coming to find a supine spinal twist. Maybe you're taking some movement in and out here, or maybe you are finding some stillness. Whatever is calling to you. 
maybe the gaze is up towards the ceiling, or you're taking that gaze over towards the right side, down the right arm. Inviting in the breath here. Coming back through center, giving that knee a little squeeze in towards the side body. As we then bring the left knee in, interlacing the hands around the front of the left shin, extend that right leg long. Take a moment, give the knee a little squeeze in towards the chest. And then taking hold of the left knee with the right hand, sending the left arm out towards the side, straight in a T or maybe your cactus in the arm. And then gently guide the left knee over the right side of the body for a supine spinal twist. Gaze can be up towards the ceiling or down the left palm. And we're trying to maintain this left shoulder, the upper back, down towards the mat. Maybe you're taking some movement in and out here, or maybe you're finding some stillness. Inviting in the breath to guide you into the twist a little bit further or to come out. Just finding your rhythm of breath here that helps to guide you into your posture here on your mat. On your next breath, gently guiding yourself out, giving your knees both a squeeze in towards the chest as we then come to place the feet back down towards the mat. And these are about hip width the distance apart. Feet to our place gently on towards the mat. Maybe you walk them away from you or maybe they're closer in towards your body. Just come in to set up your foundation here for your anatomy. And if it feels okay for you, come to place the hands on towards the hips here, on towards the hip bones. And we're going to work with some pelvic tilts. So nice and gently, just come to tuck the chin ever so slightly, not deeply, but just so there's a little bit of length through the back of the neck a little bit more. And then very, very slowly, start to tuck the tailbone under so that the arch of the lower back is flat towards the mat. Then on your next breath, come to reverse this motion. So you're sending the tailbone down towards the mat, creating a deeper arch for the lower back. And maybe the chin lifts ever so slightly. And then moving here between these two motions, however small or big feels right for you. So then motions can be quite microscopic or they can be quite big. Your movements could maybe be slow or fast. Just exploring with these pelvic tilts here, what feels good for you. Take in two more rounds in your own time. using the breath to guide you. When you've done your final round, there is no rush. Come back to find your neutral position, your position of naturalness. Just take a moment here to maybe observe the body. Just noticing if anything feels different for you. And then on your next breath, come to lift both legs up so that the feet are facing up towards the ceiling. Come to point the toes so that you're finding some engagements in through the leg. And then come to lift the arms up towards the sky also. So fingertips really reaching up towards the ceiling. And then on your next breath, come to lift the shoulders off of the mat. And you might already here start to feel a sense of engagement through the lower stomach, through the mid stomach. You might not. And then on your next breath, keeping the shoulders up here, come to lower the left leg so it hovers ever so slightly off of the mat. And come to lift the left leg back up again and then swap over towards the right. And then come to lift the leg back up again. Lower the shoulders back down. Keep the arms and the legs up where they are. We're going to take that two more times. Come to lift the shoulders off of the mat. Gaze can maybe be between the legs up towards the ceiling. Just listen to what feels good for your neck here. 
If it doesn't feel good for you to be up like that, come to lower the shoulders back down towards the mat and just alternate with the legs with the upper body all the way down towards the mat. And then coming back to lower if the shoulders are lifted. Take a round of breath, keep all of the limbs extended. And then come back to lift the shoulders off the mat. If you're taking that option, come to lower the left leg to hover. Come back up again. Come to lower the right leg. And then come back up again. Keeping all limbs extended, come to lower the shoulders back down. And if it feels good for you, you can either bring the hands back behind the legs, come to bend the knees, and then rock and roll up and down the spine till you come to find a seat or maybe you come to cross at the ankles and come to find yourself over into tabletop. If that's not working for you, just come to find yourself to seat and then come over into a tabletop when you're ready. Come to set up your foundations, bringing the knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders or thereabouts for your tabletop and gazes down towards the mat. Taking a moment to set up your foundation here. And then on your next breath, come to send your right leg back behind you so the toes are tucked, leg is extended. On your next breath, send the left arm out in front of you. So we are now balancing on the right arm, left knee. And this might be where you want to stay. If you want to progress, there are a couple of options here. You can place the right hand, left hand, sorry, so it's down onto the mat. And you can essentially drag the, the hand towards the center of the mat as you bring the knee in. So this is one version that can help to find a little bit more balance if the balance isn't too stable. The other alternative is that you can have the leg and arm extended and then you tiger's curl, bringing the hand or the elbow to connect towards the knee and then re-extend. If you are finding that the balance is off, maybe just experiment with where you're placing the right hand. Taking two rounds here, curling in and extending, really stretching feet and hand away from one another to opposite ends of the room. When you bring that curl in, find that tight tuck like a ball as you then re-extend on your final extension, come to still stay extended, bend through that right knee and then bring this left hand to the back, maybe take hold of the ankle if that is there for you, maybe the toe is flexed or pointed and then come to kick the leg away from you. So you want to start feeling some sensation through the front of the right um, quad <laughs> or into the hip flexor, still pushing down into that right hand. Come to gently release, re-extend. And then come to place the left hand down to meet the right hand, right knee down to left knee. Take a round of breath here. And then on your next breath, come to extend that left leg back behind you, toes are tucked, leg is straight. On your next breath, come to extend the right arm out in front of you, so it's hovering beside the face, beside the ear. And you've got those options, you've got the modified version, or you can come to hover the left leg. Flexing the toes to find that length, or maybe you're pointing if that engagement feels better for you. Adjusting where you need to find that balance. And then come to tuck and curl everything in, bringing either the hand or the elbow towards the knee. Re-extending out through the leg and through the arm. You can even tuck those right toes if that helps to find that stability also. Curling everything in, elbow or hand to knee. Re-extending. Taking that one more time. Using the breath to guide you. On that final extension, come to bend through that left knee, reach that right arm back behind you, take a hold of the ankle or the foot as you then come to kickstand the leg away from you to find 
that stretch through the left quad and into the hip flexor. Come to let go gently, re-extending the arm and the leg and then come to place that right hand down, left knee down. Come to take the hands a handprint ahead of you, as the toes are still tucked, come to lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Take a few moments here to pedal out the feet, stretching through the back of the legs. Maybe you swivel the hips over towards the right for a little stretch through the left side of the body, sending the hips over towards the right ever so slightly. And then maybe coming over towards the left, taking the same. Inviting in the breath here. Maybe there's a nice generous bend in the knees. Allowing yourself to create some space into the spine, into the shoulders in your down dog. Take a round of breath here. And then slowly start to walk your feet towards the top of the mat, finding yourself in forward fold. Your palms can be down towards the mat. Maybe they're up towards blocks or onto your fingertips. Allowing the head and neck to hang heavy. Allowing chest and thighs to compress together here. And start to ground down through the feet, through the big toe, the little toe, the heel. Feel the foundations of the mat beneath you start to ground into the feet nice and heavy as you come up to rise. Allow the arms to hang heavy, chin is in towards the chest and the chin and the head will be the last thing to come up. Circle the arms up towards the sky, palms might meet, gaze might follow and then draw the hands down through heart centre. Bring the hands beside the body, come to find Tadasana. Gaze is forward, palms can be facing forward or maybe they're facing towards the body depending on your shoulder anatomy. Take a round of breath here. Maybe come to close down the eyes and tune into how the body feels now that you're standing. And we've just spent a few moments down on the mat doing some movements. And now we are standing, just noticing the body. On your next breath, bring the hands up towards the sky. As the palms meet, bend the knees, fold over the tops of the thighs. Come to find your halfway lift, bring the hands towards the shins, flat back gazes down towards the mat. Come to frame the feet, step the right foot back and the left foot. Come to lower down to the knees, pushing Pushing into the palms, come to gently lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Drawing the elbows in towards the rib cage, palms are beside the ribs, firming into the tops of the feet. Come to lift your head, lift the chest, baby cobra. Drawing the hands towards the back of the mat to find that tension, that resistance in this pose. And then come to gently lower back down. Pushing into the hands, Coming up to tabletop. Come to tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Come to find your down dog, take a round of breath here. Gaze is through the legs to the back of the room. And then on your next breath, come to step towards the top of the mat, find forward fold. Firming down into the feet, coming to ground, coming up to right, circle the arms, palms might meet, gaze might follow. Draw the hands down through heart centre, bring the hands beside the body for Tadasana. Just taking a moment to observe the body, observe the breath. Noticing how that sun salutation felt, sun A. And we're going to move the same but we're going to invite in a block this time. So grabbing your block or your prop, your book, your Tupperware, whatever you might be using. And then come to place so it's on its thinnest edge, it's in a setting. And it's kind of come to sit in between the thighs so it's above the knees. 
and then come to stand at the top of your mat. So your feet will be naturally wider here. And you want to start by bringing in that active compression. So actively bringing the thighs in towards the block. You might start to realize that, notice that the glutes maybe turn on or maybe the quads. Just actively noticing where the legs want to turn on here. And then bring the hands up towards the sky. The palms might meet. As you draw them down through heart center, come to fold over the top of the thighs. Come to find your forward fold. If you notice that block is a little bit in your chest, just come to push it back ever so slightly to give yourself space. Keeping that compression, come to find your halfway lift. Come to forward fold, framing the feet. Keeping that compression, gently start to walk your way all the way towards the back of the mat, finding yourself in plank pose. You can, if you want to, come to bring the knees down or you can stay up in plank. Finding that compression, squeezing into the block. If you are on your knees, come to lower yourself all the way down to the mat. And if you're in your plank pose, come to find your chaturanga and then come to lower yourself all the way down to the mat also. Finding that compression still into the block. Drawing the elbows in towards the rib cage. Come to lift the head, lift the chest for baby cobra. And there's a couple of options here. You can either push straight back up into plank or you can push up through tabletop, but we're still keeping that active compression into the block. Finding yourself back into downward facing dock. Taking a round of breath here. A couple of options. You can either tiptoe your way towards the top of the mat or you can come to hop or jump your way, but we are still finding that active compression with the block. Finding yourself in forward fold. Taking a round of breath here. And then come to bend the knees. Send the heart arms straight back behind you. Sweep them forward, come to find chair pose. Maybe gaze comes down towards the feet. Coming to see, look at the toes. And just shift some of that weight back in towards the heels and then bring your gaze forward. If this isn't working for the shoulders, you can bring the hands to heart center. You can cactus the arms, take any variation that works for you. And then come up to stand. Bring the hands to heart center. Take the hands beside the body for Tadasana. I'm just coming to notice the breath, notice the body. Start to maybe tune into the heart rate. Noticing is there any change within the heart rate, maybe any change of the body temperature. And just simply observing, we are not judging. And then on your next breath, come to find your chair pose again. So sweeping the hands back behind you, bring the hands up towards the sky or to heart center or cactus, finding your variation, sending the weight back in towards the heels, maybe even lift the toes off of the mat for a moment and then come to place the toes back down. Finding a round of breath here. And then we're gonna come up ever so slightly and then come to find a bit more depth in your chair. Coming back up again and finding some more depth. I'm just gonna take a few rounds like this, pulsing in and out of your chair pose. Using the breath to come in and out we're not fully extending the legs, we are remaining in the chair pose. And then bring the hands to heart center, come to fold over the top of the thighs, remove the block from in between the thighs and maybe heel toe the feet back into the center ever so slightly, come to find a forward fold. On your next breath, come to find halfway lift. And then come to frame the feet Step the right foot back, come to find a runner's lunge. Maybe you are using your props here, your blocks here to elevate you off the ground a little bit. And then just start to think about really firming down through both feet, sending energy to even distribution between both legs. Start to find some buoyancy in between the legs. And then start to become a little bit light into the fingertips if they're on the mat or on props. 
and then start to get a bit lighter to the point that maybe the fingertips are off of the mat, off of the props, and come up really slowly to the sense that you're feeling that engagement through the back glute, the front glute, the quads, the calves, helping you to rise before coming up to find your crescent lunge. Sending the hands up towards the sky, or maybe at heart center. Taking any variation that calls to you here with the arms once again. Taking a round of breath. Finding your focus, your gaze towards the front of the room, your drishti. And then keeping this right arm up towards the sky, send the left hand back beside the left hip. And we're going to now start to do some crescent cross crawls. So you might like to lean the body forward ever so slightly and start to maybe walk that back foot in as we then swap the arms over, so left hand up towards the sky, right hand down towards the earth, come to hover and lift the right knee so it's about hip height. And then we're going to swap that hands over again, send that right leg back behind you. This time when you come up to rise, maybe you don't drag the foot across the floor. This time, maybe you just come up, bringing the knee to hover. So we're balancing on the left leg, finding that strength through the standing leg, really firm down into the feet. Alternating arm, alternating legs, coming back into crescent lunge. Take that one more time. And then when you finally found that extension again, so you're coming up to bring the right knee to hover, maybe you come to extend that right leg long, or maybe you're just keeping that knee bent. Bring the hands to heart center. That right knee is still hovering. And then very, very slowly and mindfully, we're gonna to start to tip the body forward sending that right leg back behind you for warrior three. Maybe if you don't practice warrior three very often, you might want to explore bringing that, that right foot down towards the mat to, to begin with. And then the body is just very slightly tipping forward, so it's kind of parallel with the mat. If you are experienced and you practice warrior three all the time, maybe you're going into that quite slowly and just slowing down the movement Find in your version of Warrior 3. If you're in your Warrior 3, start to maybe bring some awareness into that back foot, flexing the toes, sending the heel towards the back of the room. Toes are dialing down towards the floor. That standing leg is engaged. Maybe there's a soft, gentle bend in that left standing knee. And then on your next breath, coming back up to rise, moving very slowly. Bringing that left, that right knee back up to standing. Sending the hands up towards the sky. We're going to find our eagle pose here now. So there's a couple of variations. If you know where you're going, feel free to go there. But essentially we're going to take this right knee, this right leg, and wrap it over the top of the left thigh. So as if you're crossing your legs, you know, like when you sit down on the chair and you cross the legs. You can use the right foot as a kickstand to wrap around the back of the left leg. Or it can come towards the floor, so you're on the tiptoes. Wherever you are finding Nice little bend through that standing leg, that left leg. Maybe the arms are up towards the sky. Or maybe the hands are at heart centre. Then coming to unravel, lifting that right knee back up. We're nearly done, guys, I promise. Coming to find your warrior three one more time. And then from your warrior three, either utilising your blocks Come to find your standing splits. So maybe the hands are onto blocks on their higher setting, maybe you bring them down to the lower setting, or maybe the hands are down towards the mat. 
So we're on this standing left leg, that right leg is extending up towards the sky. Maybe if you want to challenge the balance some more, you come to hold onto the left leg, left ankle with the left hand. Or maybe you explore both hands. <laughs> And then on your next breath, bringing that right foot to join the left foot, finding a moment in forward fold. Coming to explore the breath. Maybe taking a nice big inhale and exhale. Coming up for halfway lift. And then come to frame the feet. To frame the feet, step that left foot back this time. Come in to find yourself in your runner's lunge. So right foot is forward. Once again, you can utilize the props. Find that buoyancy, that stabilization through the legs first. Think about that block, that active engagement we had earlier on where we were drawing the thighs together. So kind of imagine that in your runner's lunge. Once you find that buoyancy, start to get light through the fingers, start to come up nice and slowly. Sending the hands up towards the sky or any variation of arm that feels good for you. Taking a round of breath here, gazes forward. Maybe even bring some awareness into the feet. If they're not feeling quite stable here, just readjust until you find that buoyancy and that setup that's going to help you while you move in and out of your balance of your crescent. Cross lunge, cross. <laughs> Beautiful. Keeping the right hand up towards the sky, sending the left hand, sorry, alternate, other way. <laughs> Um, keeping the sending the left hand up towards the sky, right hand is down beside right hip. And start to hip forward ever so slightly with the torso over the top of that right thigh as you then come up, alternate arm, alternate leg. So right arm up towards the sky, left knee is now hovering. And then alternate arm, alternate leg coming back into that crescent lunge. Moving as slow as you can move to find that sense of control, that sense of fluidity as you move between each movement. This is where you help, it will help to find that strength that you can build within the movement, which in return will help with your balance if you're feeling a bit wobbly. Taking another round. But also be consciously aware that the wobbles are normal and they're there to help us realign, reconnect, and restabilize the body. Taking one more round, on this round come to either extend that leg for a moment of hover or keeping the knee bent. Bring the hands to heart center. And then start to tip the body forward as you then send the leg towards the back of the room for warrior three. Finding your version of warrior three, the leg doesn't necessarily have to be up hip height and the, art, the body doesn't have to be parallel to the mat. You can find a different version of warrior three. Neither are any more harder than the other. If anything, sometimes when we regress a pose back even more, sometimes that can be harder than the actual air quotation, full expression of the pose. Taking a round of breath here. And then come to bend through that standing knee ever so slightly as we come up to rise, left knee comes to hover. And then slowly start to cross the left leg over the top of the right, bending through that standing knee ever so slightly, and then weaving that left foot around the back of the right calf for eagle pose. Eagle pose in the legs. You can bring the foot down towards the mat to act as a kickstand if that balance is a little bit too much. Maybe the hands are at heart centre once again, or maybe they're above the head. On your next breath, come to unravel the legs, come to hover the left leg. Bring the hands to heart centre, and then come to send the leg back behind you for warrior three one more time. Taking a round of breath. Bringing the hands down towards the props or towards the mat. Coming to find your version of half 
stand in splits. You can either flex the toes, point the toes, but really drive into that foot, that standing foot. Find that sense of engagement through the glute to help find a more sense of engagement to be able to lift that hovering leg a little bit higher. And then come to place gently that left foot down towards the right foot, come to find forward fold. Taking a round of breath here. Then coming up to rise, circling the arms out nice and wide. Palms might meet, gaze might follow, draw the hands down through heart center. Bring the hands beside the body for Tadasana. Take a round of breath here. And tune into the body. Once again, maybe notice in the breath, notice in the heart rate. And bring the hands back up towards the sky. Palms might meet, gaze might follow, bend the knees, fold over the top of the thighs. Having your blocks close by towards the top of the mat, come to find your halfway lift. Maybe the hands are on the highest setting of the block or the lowest. Whatever's working for you here. And then come to step the right foot back. So we're finding pyramid pose. So come to find that your right leg is straight, back leg is straight, and the toes are turning out traditionally about 45 degrees, but who is counting degrees? Not me. So just find your alignment here in your pyramid pose. We just want the toes turning out, the back toes turning out, ever so slightly in front toes facing forward. And then start to bring some awareness into the hips. So we're sending the right hip back, left hip forward. Coming to find a kind of front facing alignment with the body. And we're here in a halfway lift on the blocks. If the stance is too much for you and it's too tight for the back leg, make your stance smaller. If it's not enough, maybe make your stance bigger. And then you can explore if you're on the blocks, lowering the settings, taking the hands down towards the earth, maybe bring the stomach towards the thigh, if that is there for you. Additional exploration is that you can come onto the back toes coming forward and then sinking yourself back down. So halfway lift, coming up onto the back tiptoes, sinking that, that heel back down and then coming to bring chest towards top thigh. I'm just moving between these two movements. Coming to remove any props, coming to bend through that front knee, framing that front foot. Come to step the right foot back to meet the left for downward facing dog. On your next breath, come to find three-legged dog, sending the right leg back. Toes are dying down, heel is reaching towards the back of the room. Come to bend the knee, bring the knee towards the chest. And then gently come to place that knee behind the right wrist. Start to walk the left toes all the way to the back of the mat so they can't know more. Gently place that left knee down, untuck the toes, coming to find pigeon pose. If like me, your hips are quite high and you've got a nice big gap, you can, if it feels good for you, leave the gap or you can come to place a little prop underneath, come to find some extra support there underneath the glute. A couple of variations, you can either come to stay where you are or you can come to lift the hands backwards, palms facing down, come to find a more active version of pigeon. Start to press down into the knee, the front knee and the back knee to find an activeness between the thighs and then come back down to soften. Taking that another time if it feels good for you and then soften. And then we'll all come to find ourselves to walk forward, either coming to place forearms towards the block or bring the forearms towards the mat or essentially staying up if that felt good for you also. I'm just bringing the chin in towards the chest. We're going to be here for a few rounds of breath. On your 
next round of breath if you've come down towards the earth come to push your way back up just move any props out of the way just for a moment placing the hands back down to the mat in front of you come to tuck the back toes under lift the back knee and then slowly start to come in the way that you came came out the way that you came in so come to find that tiger's curl send that leg back for three-legged dog and then come to find your downward facing dog maybe pedal out the feet for a moment here inviting in the breath before slowly coming to walk your way towards the top of the mat finding your blocks if you are using them here finding yourself in forward fold Come to find halfway lift. And then come to send that right leg back behind you. Straightening through the right leg, the left leg. The back toes are turning out ever so slightly. Front toes are facing forward. Bring that awareness into the hips. Gently send the right, the left hip back, right hip forward. Either staying here in your halfway lift pyramid pose. Just come consciously aware of your setup. Do you need to modify the legs at all? And then you can either explore folding forward and coming back up, or that variation of coming onto the back toes, leaning forward, coming back, and then folding forward. Coming up for halfway lift onto the back toes, gently lower the back heel, coming to find forward fold, all while the legs are staying nice and straight. Maybe there's a little micro bend in each of the knees. And then come to find a round of breath wherever you are in your halfway lift or your forward fold, your fold in your pyramid. Come to bend through that front knee, remove any props off just to the side. Come to frame that front foot. Gently step that right foot back ever so slightly. And then come to send the left foot back, come to find downward facing dog. On your next breath, come to find three legged dog with the left leg, flexing the heel towards the back of the room. Toes are dialing down towards the mat. And then come to find your tiger's curl, bring the knee towards the chest, gently turn and angle the left knee out towards the long edge of the mat and gently place it behind the back of the left wrist. Start to walk the toes, the right toes, all the way towards the back of the mat. Gently place the knee down, untuck the toes and find in your pigeon. You might notice that this side is a little bit more different than the other. Maybe it's more open or maybe it's the same. And the invitation is there to find that active pigeon again. So sending the hands back behind you, palms facing down. Driving into both knees, coming up ever so slightly, and then softening. And taking that another time if it feels good. And then coming to soften. Bring the hands back down towards the mat. Maybe you stay here. Maybe forearms come to a block. Or maybe forearms come down towards the mat. I'm going to take a few rounds of breath here. When you've done your final round of breath, bring the hands back out in front of you. Come to tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee. And bring that right, that left knee back in towards the chest for a tiger's curl. And then send it back, back behind you for a three-legged dog. Come to bring the left foot down to meet the right. Take a few rounds here, maybe pulling out the feet in your down dog. And then on your next breath, come to bring the knees down towards the mat. And then walk the hands towards the body. Come to sit over the tops of the heels. And we're going to come to find a wide-legged fold now. Um, and there's a couple of invitations here. You can either go straight into your wide-legged fold if you know where you're going. Or come to find a blanket if you have one. And fold it up so there's like a little lip here. Like a little edge. And we're going to come to sit on the edge of that blanket. So I'll just show you what I mean by the edge of the blanket. So you're coming to sit on the blanket and then wiggle your way forward until you find this tipping point. 
Do you find this bit where your pelvis kind of almost tilts forward? I'm going to do this on the long edge of the mat and then come to extend your legs nice and wide for wide legged fold. So the purpose of the blanket is that it can help to create a little bit of pelvic tilt which can help essentially to create a little bit more space when you're in postures like wide legged fold or Paschimottanasana forward fold for example. Um, but everybody's anatomy is different. If that doesn't work for you, lose the blanket and work without one. So start to find a little bit of engagement for the legs to begin with. So lift the toes, lift the toes, lift the heels and flex the toes towards the body and then allow them to soften. Maybe you remove any fleshy parts from underneath the back and then start to create a very subtle arch through the lower back. And then you might like to stay here, or you might like to kind of experiment with that arch of the lower back and seeing how it feels to slowly walk forward with an arch or without an arch, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. So essentially you want to kind of be thinking cat pose where you're sitting now. Not cat, cow pose, sorry. <laughs> so you're bringing an arch into the lower back. And then you can start to walk forward ever so slightly. Maybe the hands come back behind you to help you. If that's feeling funky, then come up and don't invite in that, that arch of the lower back. Just bring a neutral spine in and then also walk forward and see what that does for you. Just explore your range and your movement. But wherever you are, if you are coming forward, you're always welcome to stay up, but if you are coming forward, maybe you're using a block, the forearms can come down. Maybe the forearms come down to the mat if it's there for you. And if it's super there for you, maybe the hands come to the outside of the ankles and the chest comes down towards the mat. Just finding your variation that works for you. Maybe you draw the chin in towards the chest, just a slight gentle tuck. And then come to bring some awareness to the breath, come to soften into the pose, allow the body to soften, to potentially breathe into the spaces that might hold some tension. Can you visualize sending the breath there? Taking a few more rounds of breath where you are. Beautiful. And there's no rush, but when you feel ready, using the breath to guide you out, very gently coming up if you fold it forward. Taking the hands behind the back of the knees, leaning backwards and gently bringing the knees and legs in. Planting the feet onto the mat, taking the, the feet so they're about hip, just outside of the hips, and then just gently taking some little sways side to side, releasing through the hips there. And then when you're ready, we're all going to meet on our backs. Have a block close by, or a bolster, if you have a bolster at home as well, they're quite nice to work with. We're going to find ourselves into a supported bridge. So slowly start to lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Coming to find, so the knees are bent, about hip width apart, feet are planted onto the mat. Allow the body to connect towards the mat beneath you, come to set up. And then very gently come to tuck the tailbone under, lift the hips up, push it in towards the feet, and then come to gently place the block or bolster underneath the sacrum, so just onto the pelvic area here. We're not wanting it on the lower back, it's coming onto the pelvis, and then gently lower the hips down. If it's there for you, if you want a higher setting, feel free to use it, um, but this is, yeah, it's quite, I find the lower setting quite nourishing when you're coming to wind down the practice. Taking a round of breath here. And then the option is to either stay here or you can come to extend the legs long. So come to extend the right leg long, left leg long. 
that's too much, maybe you're just extending them ever so slightly. That extension, that extension doesn't have to be all the way. And you can either have the hands beside the body or if you want a bit extra you can bring them up above the head, maybe take hold of opposite elbows. Taking a nice stretch through the front body. And inviting in the breath. And take in two to three more rounds of breath where you are. There is no rush. If you've got the hands above the head, come to unravel, bring the hands back beside the body. If the legs are extended, very gently and slowly bring them in one by one. And then on your next breath, come to lift the legs up towards the sky, finding waterfall. So we're allowing the legs to be nice and soft here. Nice gentle bend in the knee. Maybe you, and then maybe if you want to, you can also invite in the arms. Allowing them to be nice and soft here also. And if it's calling to you, maybe you take some little circles out through the wrists, through the ankles. And if you go in one way, go the other way. And then come to remain still. On your next breath, gently come to lower the feet down towards the mat. Pushing into the feet. Ever so slightly come to tuck the tailbone under. Don't lift the hips too high, maybe just a centimetre to push that prop out underneath you if you've used it. And then come to bring the knees in towards the chest, give yourself a little squeeze towards the body. On your next breath, come to extend the arms long, the legs long, take up loads of space on your mat. And come to either close down the eyes or take a soft gaze. Take a deep inhale through the nose. And make a nice big audible sigh out of the mouth. If that felt good, maybe take in one more like so. Be mindful not to force that breath out, it's just allowing it to be a nice big sigh. And become conscious of the parts of the body that connect to the foundation beneath you. To the back of the heel, the calf, the thighs, the glutes. The back, the shoulders, the arms, the back of the head. Allow the forehead muscles to soften and the tongue to be heavy in the mouth. And come to find your final resting pose, your Shavasana. When it is time to come up and close the practice, I will guide you out. Until then. And slowly start to bring some awareness back to the space, back to the body. And notice if the mind has wandered somewhere. And acknowledge where it's gone, 
without judgment, and gently guide it back to the present moment here. And feel free to continue your Shavasana, or stay where you are and close your practice here, or you can come to find some movement into the fingers, the toes, the ankles, the wrists. Maybe taking a full body stretch. And coming to roll over to one side to take a round of breath. Maintaining that soft gaze or the close of the eyes, gently come up to find a seat. And taking your time, there is no rush. And when you found your seat, drawing the hands towards heart center, or maybe the hands are on the, on the thighs, palms facing up or down. And coming to find length in your seat, rolling the shoulders back and down. Taking a moment to acknowledge yourself here and your practice here today. For taking the time to make space for yourself. And deepest gratitude to each of you here today. From my heart to yours. Thank you. Thank you so much guys. I hope you had a good practice. It was a pleasure to guide you as always. Wishing you a great day, great evening, great week. Take care. Bye.